Do you think you're lazy because you're not doing anything but scrolling through your phone in bed? Well, it might be because you're fighting a battle that's been overlooked. And what's been overlooked are the signs that your mental health is in trouble. So let's look at six signs that you're struggling with your mental health, not laziness. Number one, you're addicted to your phone or your tablet or whatever device you use for social media and updates about stuff outside your current life. You don't need to pull the plug and go full forest child. We all check on things from time to time and that's fine. In fact, it's now the only really efficient way to keep up with what's going on at all. However, if those momentary updates are more like, this is my virtual life now, you might be trapping yourself in your own mini matrix. You're so into what's going on virtually that you're not participating in your own life. Avoiding chores, ignoring family and friends, ducking out on work, not good. Take a breather and ask yourself what you're escaping from. Then you can reach out and deal with it so you can get back to nurturing your reality. Number two, you're too overwhelmed to do anything. Overwhelmed, that's the key word here, overwhelmed. It's a whole other creature altogether. Being overwhelmed is when you've made the common mistake of looking at all the work needed to be done all at once and have freaked yourself right out by the sheer amount. And so your survival mechanism kicks in and you hide. You've given yourself a blue screen and have crashed. You're okay and in good company. Most of us have inadvertently freaked ourselves out before. This is when we remember anything and everything is accomplished by taking steps. Try to look at one step and maybe how it leads to just the next step. Don't try to fly up the entire staircase in one shot. Number three, you're more physically exhausted than usual. These signs definitely have a common thread of being not your norm. You could have that job that really sucks, but you've been doing it, even if you're kind of irritated. Now though, you find you're beyond that. You're exhausted but I'm getting a full night's sleep and I'm not out all night or anything either. And you're still feeling like you've been awake for a week? Well, it's been found that with depression, you may well have non-restorative sleep. That's definitely not a conscious choice. It might be time to look at options from the pros. Number four, you're neglecting your personal hygiene. No judgment on your personal regimen. Again, we're focusing on what's the norm for you. I mean, some of us can't feasibly wash our hair every day because it takes four hours to dry. This is a case of you're grungier than your norm and you just aren't doing anything about it. Not because you'd rather be doing something fun, but more because part of you feels like, what's the point? That would be depression talking. You don't actually want to stay in the U-shaped depression in bed but you also can't muster the effort or see the point in getting up and into the shower. Number five, you're oversleeping. Remember earlier when non-restorative sleep was mentioned? This could well be part of the why you're oversleeping. Frankly, your body doesn't feel like it has been sleeping. The other part is feeling an opposing force preventing you from getting up and out of bed. You actually feel like you don't have a choice in the matter and are being held down you start to associate your bed as a safe space, like a hermit crab in its shell, so you stay stuck. And number six, you're in pain. Okay, so where is this mystery pain coming from? No, you're not losing it, it happens. It's a depression thing. There's a whole lot of stuff your brain does that you're not consciously aware of. If you're depressed, you can manifest headaches, stomach pains, nausea, and cramps. Yeah, those cramps are real and those pain receptors are being poked all courtesy of your brain's response to depression. If something fun comes up, the pain doesn't magically disappear, allowing you to function at full capacity. This is not laziness. This is your mental health asking for attention. Calling someone lazy as a go-to explanation is lazy in itself. The slur is being thrown without understanding why certain things aren't being done. It's also harmful to ignore medical issues and neglect seeking proper treatment like a bad diagnosis from a quack doctor. So before you push yourself to do it anyhow, give yourself a break and go through a little checklist. Be honest with yourself and ensure you're getting the care you need. Thanks so much for watching and remember, you deserve to get the help you need. See you soon.